Okay, we'll uh, study uh, uh, EM algorithm today. So, uh, let me. So, uh, we, we, we studied that our observed score function is equivalent to mean score function. So now let's take a look at the mean score function more carefully. And so this mean score function is a conditional expectation of the complete sample score function. And it's, it's a conditional expectation is dependence on unknown parameter two. So, so we have a parameter dependency in two places. One is in SCOM. In, in the original score function. The other one is in computing the expectation. So, so then uh, to solve, so to solve this equation, one way to solve this equation is to fix the uh, parameter in the condition expectation and, and solve it for, at, so, we, so here, notice that we have a red color only one, one place, right? And then we can do it, compute it iteratively. So this is essentially a, a one-line summary of the EM algorithm. So, so in the E step, essentially computing the conditional expectation given the observed data and given the current parameter. And M step, solve it, right? Solve the mean score, solve this equation. Okay. So this is a more formal desc uh, description. Uh, so, LCOM is the likelihood function of eta based on the complete sample observation. And then EM algorithm is an iterative algorithm uh, computing the so log, so taking the conditional expectation of the log, log likelihood function on the complete response, and then then take the condition expectation. That's the E step, evaluated at the current parameter. And M step, we find the maximizer with respect to uh, eta. Okay. And uh, so that is the uh, definition. And then one important property proved by Adam Stolard and Lubin. So this is one of the, you know, highly cited papers in statistics. So, uh, so basically, the claim is that if you update, so if you find the maximizer, right, maximizer of the Q, and and then this maximizer will increase the likelihood. Okay increase the observed likelihood. And so that is the main uh, theory in, in this paper. And that does not necessarily mean that uh, uh, this EM algorithm, the solution to EM algorithm converges to MLE, not necessarily, but they make uh, some heuristic argument. So this is the uh, heuristic argument. So, so basically by theorem, this theorem, the sequence is monotone increasing, right? So this property essentially means monotone increasing. And so if it is MRE exists, then it is bounded above. And then some conditions, your EM sequence will converge to stationary point. So that's, that is the kind of uh, argument in the proof but uh, it is uh, incorrect proof. So, so actually it's wrong. Uh, the proof, technical proof is wrong. And so uh, actually Jeff O later pointed out the, uh, the what was, so, so actually uh, Jeff Wu became famous with this paper. <laughs> so uh, so he, he gave a correct proof of the, uh, uh, convergence of the EM algorithm and uh, com cons consistency to uh, convergence to the MLE. But uh, uh, we are not really going to 
uh, cover the technical all the technical details here. Uh, this is just uh, uh, but uh, this theorem itself is worthy of discussion. So so I'm gonna uh, give a, a brief sketch the proof of this uh, theorem. So so now LQ at a T is a, is a what? Is a conditional expectation of the log L com at a evaluate at data and at a T. And so, so then if you subtract by Q at a T, And then you get what? You get essentially expectation of the log of the ratio. Oops, T, right? So log of the ratio and then condition expectation. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, well, no, it's it's less. So, uh, this is just an unknown attack. Okay. Uh, no, this is unknown parameter. Okay. So we we later we will. We will put t plus one here, but this is just the definition. Okay. So now let's take a look at this, uh, the ratio. The ratio is a ratio of the essentially joint density, right? The joint density. So, so the joint density. So this is actually. Ratio of the joint density, so we can write it as a uh, as eta okay. So the joint density is factorized into the conditional density and marginal density. So conditional density is actually why miss given data delta at uh, times, yeah, the notation is a little bit uh, times marginal. Okay, so marginal is we can write it as obvious, right? At uh, So joint is a product of the conditional times margin. So that's it. Oh uh, yeah. Second line here. Second to the third. So we subset. So it's just a difference. I see. I see. Okay. I should make it clear. So Q at the T minus Q, okay? <laughs> okay. I don't know, in Korea we use that kind of, uh, uh, I don't know whether you guys did the same thing. In Korea we did this kind of a thing in the ele elementary school. Uh, anyway, okay. So now, now let's, we now we apply low expectation of log, right? So we're gonna apply the expectation of log on both sides. And then log, because of the log, the product will be summation. So so then now I'm gonna change it to red color again. 
So then this, this guy will be equal to expectation of the log of the conditional density. given data data t plus expectation of the log of the marginal density data t We just, uh, you know, uh, apply log and take the expectation. And then let's investigate one by one. So this guy turns out to be what? Minus of the DKL eta T eta no. Pullback liable divergence corresponding to so so remember the expectation here expectation here is the conditional expectation evaluated at a t which has a which is exactly this density this sensor function so negative of this one is actually a pullback liable divergence right so 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 this is a callback libeler. So that means callback libeler divergence is always non-negative, but we have a negative, so minus. So that means we have non I mean, right? Non-positive. So anyway, that's the first term is this. And second term actually is nothing random. So, so second term, we can safely ignore the expectation because conditional on this one is they are just a constant, right? Is they are not really random variable. So so then this is actually this is actually equal to log L OBS eta minus log OBS eta t. So usually this is negative. So the, this this one is a something negative plus this guy. So that means if we if eta if we find the maximizer. So let me let me add one more line. Okay. So so that actually implies implies Q. So at, can't quite see. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, back to the meeting, I guess. Oh, okay. Never mind. Yeah. Thank you. So, yeah. is uh right so because yeah okay so basically this is the main inequality we obtain. So that means if we 
make any any eta then make this positive will make this also positive so so now if we find the maximum right eta p plus one will make this non-negative positive because it's a maximizer so so then it will automatically make this also positive right? so Thus, make the left hand side non negative. So that's that's basically the uh, uh, sketchy the proof of this theorem. Yeah. We are maximizing Q, right? Q function. Yeah. So uh, we would expect the left hand side to be automatically positive for a particular step. So did you mean that that implies the right hand side will also be positive? Right. So then so we will make so uh, which implies yeah implies right hand side is also positive okay i you can find it in i mean i record i i record everything so it's it's available online but anyway you are of course welcome to Take picture if you want. Uh, so I'm going to move on. So let's uh, reflect uh, this EM algorithm under this uh, simple setup. So this is the, uh, this is the, oh uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. So usually, uh, in the old <clears throat> we will now find the interaction by taking line. So they will do the same as the ethnic, for example, something to ethnic. Uh, I mean, in the E step, E step, we usually cannot get the interaction by this. Uh, that's, you mean the are you talking about Monte Carlo? Right, right. Just, yeah, we need to use. Uh, yeah, that's another story. Yeah, come to me. Yeah, right. right. So in the come to me, so there is an estimate error at all the one word Right, 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 right. But so that affect this proof here because this is based on the tail divergence theory. Right. So if you have a EM, I mean, what the color EM, it is not convergent. So, so, so this convergence is true when you. Can exactly compute the instantaneous step. So, so actually, that's one limitation of the Monte Carlo EM, and and we'll cover that next week. So, yeah. but here, everything is okay, right? You have a exact, uh, you know, so sup suppose you can compute the integration, so that then should be okay. So, so now let's move on. So now we we have a power parameter of interest is is in the conditional distribution. And and this is the complete sample. On the complete response, this is the log likelihood. And now we have a missing data following some model. And Y is observed if and only if delta equal to one. Then again, we the E step based on this algebra, uh, based on, on on the this setup, the E step is just the taking the conditional expectation of the log likelihood function. Conditional on the data. So, so delta equal to one case, the data is everything. So, so delta equal to one, we don't, there's nothing, right? Uh, unobserved. So, we just have it original, uh, original log density. And now for delta equal to zero, we don't observe why, right? So, delta equal to zero, we, we need to compute the conditional expectation of this log, log density function, which where y is random variable. So, so basically the, the expectation here 
is with respect to this evaluation. This y given x and delta equal to zero. So y give so y given x and delta zero can be derived using the Bayes theorem. This is the tensor theorem. Right. So so basically. So this is the probability over delta equal to one, zero, given x and y, right? So you, you basically you can compute the joint event in the numerator, joint event, and then denominator, you integrate out over, over the missing, which is y. Okay. So that, that should be okay. Now I'm I'm gonna evaluate. So we can actually write it Q1 in Q2. So Q1 is this term. Q2 is just the second term. Okay. Now I'm gonna uh, uh, in investigate further on what's what's going on. So under MAR, then a uh, pi. So under MAR, then pi x y is equal to pi x. So so then you can actually doesn't depends on why. So it so basically they cancels. Right. So so then you have a, a simplification. And then in this particular case, Q2 can be simplified further. So to, in Q2, remember in Q2 we, we have this term. But now uh, because of missing a random. We, it's just the taking the just the this time. right okay and then so we are interested in computing the maximize of q and uh that maximize should be some combination of maximize of q1 and maximize of q2 and now Maximize of Q2, if when I when we investigate this, so what is the maximizer of this guy? Maximizer of this guy is F set type of two set of two. That's a lemma 2.1. So what is the lemma 2.1? Set a zero log F. Y theta has a maximum at set equal theta zero, right? So, so that means the uh, as a function of the theta, this one, it, the maximum of this one, this guy, is actually at the current parameter. So that implies what? No update, right? So you are actually uh, bringing in any extra information, you are not really improving anything, right? From Q two, so you don't have to maximize Q two at all. That's the uh, bottom line, right? In this case, so it's because you are you are not really you are you are returning the same value from the input. Why you consider, right? So so basically, you can completely ignore the second term. That means. You can just use the first term to maximize, which is consistent with what we know already, right? We we, we discussed this already, but uh, that actually confirms. So we, we got some kind of uh, reassuring, but uh, using uh, re reassuring our knowledge using a different new framework, right? So, okay. So that, I hope that help you guys to to understand uh, EMI which is better. So now uh, I cover us a few uh, examples. So first of all, categorical missing data. Then, you know, in the categorical, uh, we have a finite, uh, you know, countable, right? I mean, countable number of the possible values. So, so then the integration leads to the summation. So, so we have we have this summation. So, 
So then the integration leads to summation and then the expectation. So, so then we have this uh, conditional expectation. So conditional expectation essentially, it, so this is a kind of point mass, right? Assigned to possible values. Uh, so, so that means you can uh, use this point mass as kind of a weight, uh, weight assigned, uh, obtained from. So, bottom line is, bottom line is the uh, in the categorical data, E step is simplified as a weighted average. Okay, so weighted average of the uh, of the original, uh, you know original quantity that you want to maximize, but the weight is actually changes over EM iteration, right? Because it, it actually depends on eta t, okay? So the problem simplifies. So, so if you think of, if you're writing a code, right? Programming code, you, you can, all you have to do is uh, evaluate the functional form of the conditional distribution, conditional probability, as a function of a parameter. And then you just update it, right? You, you call it a, a program. And, and so, so that is the um, uh, one uh, idea. So scope function of eta, so then EM algorithm can be obtained by solving this one. So, so uh, Joseph Ibrahim, as I said, Joe Ibrahim, uh, first uh, found out and, and found, you know, uh, published a paper in JASA and he, after that he wrote, you know, uh, uh, many papers on EM applying this idea to many uh, problems and uh, have a lot of publication. He's now at UNC, so which is uh, so good university. Uh, anyway, anyway, uh, uh, let's go back to example 2.5. So example 2.5, remember, uh, uh, is, is kind of Bernoulli, Bernoulli, uh, logistic regression type, Bernoulli, uh, P, I beta, okay. As a function of X, so PX, uh, and then, uh, so delta equal to one, you observe y, no problem. Delta equal to zero, you don't observe y. So you 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 need to compute the weight, which is the essentially conditional property of y, given x and delta equal to zero. Okay, and the delta equal to. So then you need you need to use the Bayes theorem again. So this is the original you know probability, and and then this is the Response probability, okay. I mean, non-response probability actually. So, so that, uh, so we last class we evaluate this formula as a uh, using the mean score theorem, right? And so this is just another parameter. So we have a, but now the main difference is that we evaluate this uh, weight as a function of the current parameter value. So that you can see that this is just, uh, if you think of solving this uh, equation, then you are actually splitting. So so, so you, for a while, for delta equal to one, you just use the original function. For delta equal to zero, you actually split. So you have a, uh, you okay? Let me write here. So it's like uh, so you 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 are ba basically you have a data x and y and and delta delta right? And so delta equal to one, you just use x one y one to compute, but delta equal to zero. Then what it what it does here is that you essentially duplicate 
1 and 0, duplicate the record into 1 and 0, and then create a weight. And the, so weight here is 1 if, if no missing, right? And, and then this weight is actually W, J, 1, W, J, I mean 0, W, I, 1, something like that. Okay. And then, so in the EM, so in the EM iteration, you, so you have a complete data set here because you know the possible values, why 1 or 0, 1 or 0, right? Possible values. So this, you can create the complete data, it's kind of implicated data, but your weight, your weight changes uh, for its EM iteration. Okay, so actually, I uh, in my two thousand, so I my this is the basic idea of the uh, fraction imputation. Imputation. So I I you know uh, use the Ibrahim's idea and apply it to more general. Uh, how how we can interpret it as an imputation and and so I published this paper, Biometrica. But anyway, we we'll, we we'll, uh, cover that later. But uh, uh, for categorical data, this kind of weighting uh, makes uh, sense. Perfectly makes sense. So let's move on. I'm sorry. Right, right. So, so categorical data, you, you know, uh, you, you know all possible values. So, so this kind of reading is really easy to implement. But what is not clear is how to implement it continuous data. And that's, yeah, so I, I in this paper, uh, we cover it and I will explain in uh, a few weeks later. So, uh, so this is just uh, uh, explaining what I explained, description of what I explained just now. Okay, now let's move on to EM in the exponential family. So this is a kind of interesting. So remember, so this is the exponential family with a T, Y as a complete surface statistic, right? And, and now let's take the conditional expectation of the F density function. So conditional expectation of, so log F, you have a constant plus theta prime T Y minus A theta, right? So then, you uh, you now want to com compute the conditional expectation of this guy, given data, given theta t. So then, basically, you have something like this. So that is the E step, and the, in the M step, you take the differentiation with respect to theta. So that means your, your equation that you obtain from the M step is this equation, right? And by the way, by the way, this guy is equal to, so, so A is actually the character, characteristic function. I mean, it's more like a MG, log MGF, right? So, so you take the partial derivative with theta. So this is actually normalization, normalizing uh, constant. Well, let me. I, we can show it. Uh, I guess. So. So now we are interested in what what exactly this guy is, right? And so let's take the. log so uh, t 
take the differentiation. Uh, well, actually, we can use we can use this score equation. Okay, so what is the score function? School function is T Y minus A prime theta, right? Uh, because the school function is a log density and differentiation. So this is your school function. And then you take the expectation, then we know this, right? So that means we we know this is equal to expectation of this guy. So that's what. So that that means we can we can obtain this. So. So actually, we can use. Uh, this is better, even though they are equivalent. It's probably better to use this this one to get this. One. So then you have this. Because you, you plug in, then you obtain this. So actually this equation four is interesting. Equation describing the nature of the EM algorithm. Okay. So EM algorithm basically equating the statistics, statistics. One unconditional one, unconditional expectation to the conditional expectation. And when you compute the condition expectation, you need to compute the use the current uh, current parameter value. Okay. So let's let's understand this equation more carefully. So here's a here's a very interesting graph. Okay. So basically, we are we are interested in solving this equation, right? F so H one is the conditional expectation, H two is unconditional expectation. So we want to just solve this this equation, right? But the way the way we are able to solve it is very interesting. So. Basically, this is H1, this is H2. So this is the solution. Okay, we wanna, we wanna find this. So we are interested in finding the para, the value of theta, where two functions meet, right? Okay, now, how to, how to go there if we have an initial point here? So this is, uh, okay, I guess, okay. So we, we need, okay, we, we, our, this is initial point, right? I mean, H1, so this is my initial point, theta one. So from the theta one, I first compute the H1 theta one, right? So this is my, evaluation of the y value of h1 at the initial value of theta, right? And then check which theta has h2 equal to h1, right? So so now we, we know that, uh, okay, so I can, you know, I can compare, so I, from h, so I, I just equate at this one, I just uh, you know solve for h solve for h two theta equal to h one theta t. Okay, so I solve this equation to obtain theta two. Okay, so that that is so this is my theta two. Okay, and then. From theta two, because given theta two, I I apply to H one again. So then it, this one, and then and solve solve for theta again. 
right? We using H2, H1, theta 2. So, I mean, so H2 is an updating theta. H1 is only evaluating set, evaluating the condition expectation. Okay. So if you do that, then you can see that the way it's, it find the solution is kind of a stepwise. Okay. So that's interesting. So so then, uh, well, so you you basically do this one direction at each time. So that's that is the uh, uh, one way to understand the EMI origin. Okay. And now let's use. Uh, okay. So now let's move on. Example three point nine. So by very normal distribution, we know the surface statistics already, right? We have a five parameter. We know the first moment and second moment are the uh, surface statistics for the parameters. So that's, we know this is what we want to use. So maybe this is the better notation T. So anyway, uh, <clears throat> So then this result, equation four, right? We want to apply this equation four. So that means we want to solve this equation. So, so basically we want to equate. So we equate the conditional expectation to the unconditional expectation where the conditional expectation uses the current parameter, but unconditional expectation is actually uses the unknown parameter, right? So that is a, a M step, updating step. The E step is a, a computing the conditional expectation. Okay. So that is the uh, idea. And then now the question is how we actually compute this conditional expectation. Well, we know this vibrant normal. So, so by very normal, this conditional expectation is relatively easy, right? So for example, what's going on? So uh, yeah, should I? Explain or, or can I just skip? <laughs> uh, so, for example, see, we have a X and Y, and so we we have four situation, right? Observable, observable, observable. So H set, H set, K set, L set, M set, for example. So if you use this kind of notation, basically we, the left, the summation here, original I equal to one to N, should be changed to summation I equal to H plus the summation I equal to K plus the summation I equal to L plus the summation I equal to M. So we need to separate separate them first and then evaluate the conditional expectation one by one. So, so in H, in H, we observe everything. So really there's nothing is so so in H, this is just the conditional expectation is just the original data. Oops. Right. So the five sub statistic remains the same. K set, we observe X but not Y. So that means we, we can use XI directly, but for Y, we need to compute the conditional expectation.
Okay. And then when you compute the condition expectation, you need to use the current parameter value. So, so for example, this one is what? Mu y plus sigma x y divided by sigma x x x i minus mu x, right? The conditional mm -hmm. Gaussian. So that means you you use the current parameter value. So you you use this all this current parameter value when computing the condition expectation. So this is also same here, right? So this one and this one you square. So you need a conditional expectation plus conditional variance. Xi, Xi square plus conditional variance. So okay. So that so that's uh that that is but this is a closed form, so so it's relatively easy. And else that same study, right? You just you just change it, uh, change the role of x and y, and to the same. M said you don't observe everything, so that means you need to compute the uh, everything is unconditional expectation. So you still need to compute. Because you don't know, you don't observe anything, right? Uh, sorry. So you basically re express all the first moment and second moment in terms of the current parameter value. So then, and then use that to solve. So, so the M step. going on so then the m step is essentially the right side here the right side here is just uh just what uh you, you can this you this you have <clears throat> you you have a five parameters so, so it's it's a, a determining equation for, for parameters in the model. Okay. Any question? If we didn't observe x and y, why we still treat this? Uh, I'm sorry. If we didn't observe x and y, why we still treat this? Yeah, that, that gives the information. So suppose, okay, suppose there's no missing. I'm missing both. Huh? I'm missing both. Okay. Ah. Actually, that's, you don't, right. So you can, actually, another way is, it doesn't really give any information. So you can actually remove it. So so then you need to completely so both sides, right? You you need to because it it doesn't, yeah, you are right. So it doesn't really give any information. Let's see. Okay. That's, okay, let me see the Yeah, this is a missing complete render, right? So so if if it's yeah, so it could have information. Some cases, but here is it doesn't. Okay. Theta, I mean, that part 
doesn't have to do with So the set M doesn't really constrain anything because if you think of the mark, most of the microwave, it's, it's empty, right? Right, right. So, so we should get started. Yeah, so so my, my question is that will there be problem if we keep it? Uh, no. No, it's easy just to make the commodus a little bit slower. But but in the end it is a it is set, you will be the same. Because you you are not really so basically the set it's not totally important, but anyway, uh is that doesn't really have information at all. But if you keep it and and, and put it in, in, in the computation, actually it slow down the components a little bit. But in the end, it will be okay. Uh, now let's move on to. So this is the this example three point six is perhaps the easiest example of the EM algorithm. Okay, so this is kind of a minimum information that you I expect you to to learn from this course. So okay. But this is practically important. I mean, suppose you have this kind of data, then how do you want to compute the MLE, right? So we have extra information, K and L, marginal information, partial information, you know. Okay, so not knowing anything about EM algorithm at all. So what would be one possible way? Well, okay, now I know that this is one or two, one or two, right? So then can I just split it? 15, 15, sorry, sorry, just randomly, okay? Then I have a, I can treat it as if I have a full observation. So same way here, one and two, one and two, okay? And then I can say, I can just split it randomly, half, sorry, sorry. So well, this is not really a good idea, but at least in the beginning, maybe okay. So then once you have that, you have everything. You don't have any missing. So you can compute from here, from this you know, initial imputation, whatever initial data, you can compute the probability, right? Just a sample proportion of the y, y1 equal to one, y1 equal to two, right? I mean, something like that. So you can compute it. Using, the, using this fake data, no problem. So that, but then once you obtain that, then you, you realize that when this random split, Right, half a split seems to be too nice. Too nice because essentially I'm kind kind of assuming that the conditional property of y two equal to one, even y one equal to one, is the same as the conditional property of y two equal to one and right. I mean, even y y equal to one. That's that's not probably not true. So then we can actually use this to estimate the conditional property, right? And so once you use this, you know, current parameter to estimate the conditional property, and then you have a better split. Better split of this original data. That is instant, essentially. So you, you are, when you split it, you are, you are actually assuming, again, this split, is assuming pi two given uh, pi hat prop p hat y two given one given y one equal to one is y two equal to two. That's a little bit too simple. So so point is that you can actually use the current parameter value to to update. So then you can iterate. So so. It, to formalize it, here's an idea. So you have this uh, 
pi i j. This is a parameter. So you have a four parameter to estimate, but actually three parameter because one parameter is just a redundant. Okay. And then we know already that surface the statistic is just a proportion, sample, sample count, right? Sample count for that cell for the case. So why I n i j. So so if there's no missing, then pi i j hat will be just n i j divided by n. That's that will be very natural uh maximum length estimator. But the problem is that we don't know, we don't observe NIJ. So why? Because NIJ is, for example, N11 is the total count of the Y1 equal to one, Y2 equal to one. Well, we, we know this, we observe this one in set H, but not, not in set K, right? So, so then, what would be a good way? Well, we can maybe we can decompose it like N11 is N11H plus N11K, N11L, right? And then Then this guy, we observe it definitely, 100. This guy is, is a 30 times the conditional property. So that this guy it will be 30 times conditional property of y1 equal to one given y2 equal to one given y1 equal to one. Okay, it's this guy is a uh, 28 times conditional property of y1 equal to one given y2 equal to one. So remember, we conditional on observed. So this conditional on means in K, we observe y1 equal Y1. Here we observe. So this is the observation. You you observe this. So you you observe this one. And then uh, basically want to compute the what is the healthy or the missing right given observation. So that is the basically the idea. So all you want to do is to, to compute the conditional expectation of this guy. Right? even the current information. So that is this guy. So you have a NIJH, NIJK, NIJ. So, okay. So this is the, so this one you always observe it. And this is actually conditional probability. In K, Remember in, in set K, you observe Y1. So that's why you compute the condi this conditional probability. Right, this is uh, essentially conditional probability of Y2 equal to J given Y1 equal to I. And also, This guy is a conditional property of y one equal to i given y two equal to j. I have a quick question. Uh, sure. In this example, it's not a non-conditional, so we cannot factorize the non-conditional. Uh, I'm sorry? Uh, in this example, it's 
this is not monotone missing, right? So, so we cannot use we cannot use right, right. We cannot use the factory likelihood, right? If it's a monotone, then then we we don't have to go through this, but uh yeah. Okay. So so this is a categorical example. And then you can see this conditional property will be updated, right? As as you go through iteration, you have a better uh, estimate. So you you use whatever the current one to to utilize in computing the conditional expectation. So so that is uh, this example and. Uh, Yeah, so our program should be uh, straightforward. So you have uh, data, right? This is the data input, and then you have you have an initial initial property using set H. So this is the initial joint property, and then then you you iterate. Basically, each step you compute, right? Just using the formula. So this is the expected NIJ. And then M step, you just compute it and then iterate. Uh, so, so then th you have this. So you can see that the initial, you can see the difference between initial and. So it's. It's not totally different, but different, right? I mean, not the same. So that means you you utilize the partial information. Uh, okay. So now I'm gonna move on a little bit. I don't have much time. So, okay. We can use so this is an interesting example. You, you have, suppose you have a t distribution. T distribution, the definition of t distribution, you can view it as a normal divided by square root of the chi square divided by its degree of freedom, right? So, so this is uh, you know latent variable. I mean, always missing. Latent variable is always missing. And uh, the idea is to we can use EM algorithm to uh, solve this kind of problem. Uh, so, <clears throat> so how to do that? Well, see you. So you you can easily specify. So given W. What's going on? Okay. Well, uh, I guess minus mu and sigma. Uh, okay, this is T. So, so, but T is, T itself is, is a uh, UI divided by square root of WI. Something like that. And WI is a chi square nu divided by nu. Okay, actually, right? Okay. And then U, UI is a normal zero one. That. Okay. So then this is a conditional distribution and this is marginal. And and so you can use that to obtain the prediction prediction distribution. So as a function of W, you you have so this is so F W. Remember, it's a chi square. So this is the density of chi square, and this is the density of the normal. Distribution. 
And then you view it as a function of W, density function of W, and see what it looks like. So you have a, in terms of a WI, you have a polynomial term and exponential term. So it becomes a gamma. So you can check, see, so what is the density of gamma? Alpha, beta. I think it's a proportional to x alpha minus one, e minus beta over x, something like that, right? So we use this kind of expression to simplify. And turns out that this is the gamma distribution. And then we know the expectation of gamma. So, so this is the prediction model. And so the expectation of this gamma is, is this one. So, okay. So one thing you can notice is that this condition expectation is uh, if nu, right? Nu is large, then this will be close to one, right? But if it's, it's not really large, like a four or five, then even though this is a standardized, you can actually, if this is big, I mean large, then you can actually weight will be smaller. So that actually is a good idea for handling outliers. If you have extreme, extreme values, it will actually give a down weight. Okay. So, so okay. Uh, so basically, uh, yes. You can check on that. Uh, the point is that the, the idea can be extended to. So suppose you you are using t t distribution error model for the regression. So why you consider t distribution? We allow for outliers, right? We allow heavy. I mean, right? So we we may allow uh, robust robust regression. So to allow robust regression, this is a reasonable approach with a T-error model. And then this EM algorithm idea can be directly applicable. In that case, the, the role of the weight is downweighting outliers. And then, then this is, we ass, everything is assumed based on the assumption that you know the degree of freedom. No, but in practice, you don't know. So this is exactly the tuning parameter. Nu is actually the tuning parameter. The question is how to compute the tuning parameter in practice. Any idea? Cross validation, right? I mean, we are we are talking about flexible model. I mean, the model is a flexible model, right? You it's a class, so you change, you change new, then you have a more, right, uh, wide, uh, very different classes of error distribution. So, so then which new is good for best prediction essentially can be determined by checking your uh, test, I mean, you know, cross validation anyway. But uh, this is the uh, initial uh, I mean, uh, concept. And uh, I think that's, that's all. Oh, yeah. Why the Why the human algorithm? 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 Why the human the Okay. Uh, you know, is like a higher variable. So maybe you need to write down the. I see. The four function of that. And yeah, right. Uh, I think really we are, what we care about is computing, estimating the, compute, computing the MLE for this parameter, right? U and sigma. So, so actually, we need to first write down the score equation for. for for mu and sigma, 
that turns out to be a function of the W value. And actually, if you set out, then actually this school function should be something like something like this. Xi minus mu sigma square equal to zero. And then I don't know exactly, but something like uh, for, I mean, uh, y xi minus mu square minus sigma square, something like that. Okay. So this is the school equation that we would use if we observe the WI. But since we don't observe the WI, we need to apply the EM algorithm, right? Couldn't take the condition expectation of WI to, to apply the M step. Okay. So, so this one actually is, is a justification of why we use this one. And I have a script in the script, you can find more derivation. So hopefully uh, that answers your question. Okay.